What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today I'm super excited to do this video because this knife does a couple of things so very well, and there are two things the majority of knife manufacturers out there always get wrong. What we've got today is the Tucson Knives TS265 Puffer. This is a Majuan Mokhtar design. Not the first that I've reviewed from this designer, and I've liked his design language every time. I want to say thank you to Justin over at White Mountain Knives, the only place that I buy Tucson product. It's just the best buying experience for Tucson products, and Justin takes care of the knife enthusiast community. Um, Price-wise on this Tucson TS265, uh, pretty reasonable. I think it is pretty reasonable. You're looking at $59.99. If you throw in one of the numerous 10% discount codes that Justin offers over there at White Mountain Knives, you will get this down to $53.99, and $53.99 is cheaper than $54 every day of the week, guaranteed. You can take that penny to the bank. So, we have got a compact companion edc fixed blade here it is not as small and lightweight as what you would associate uh, with a neck knife it is a little larger it is a little more heavy a little more hand feeling a little more capable feeling it is just a very compact fixed blade and we're going to get those specs out of the way right now you're looking at a blade length of about three and a quarter inches that's about eight centimeters uh, a blade width at the widest of 1.3 inches or 32 and a half millimeters uh, blade stock thickness 147 thousandths of an inch or 3.7 millimeters your handle width the same width as the blade so 1.3 inches or 32 and a half millimeters Millimeters. Uh, that handle does narrow down to three quarters of an inch in the center and then flares out to about an inch and a tenth at the butt end. Um, and what did I say here? Handle thickness is 475 thousandths of an inch or 12 millimeters. Uh, overall length, you're looking at seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Uh, behind the edge thickness for your secondary bevel, your edge grind. Uh, averaged out about 15 thousandths of an inch or 0.38 millimeter on this well done flat grind um, on this beautiful, beautiful blade profile and grind. Uh, weight, you're looking at a 4.02 ounces, just the knife, or 5.33 ounces with the sheath. And then that is 114 grams or 151 grams. Um, let's pull this out of here for just a second. We will take a very quick look at the Tucson packaging. Standard sort of vinyl paper covered magnetic box. No insert. The knife was in like four plastic bags. Um, the sheath was in another plastic bag and that was it. There was no paperwork, no anything else. Uh, but it does feature a sticker that has the model number, something that Tucson does not always feature on their packaging. Let's bring in the Kydex sheath very quickly. Pretty well made, decent Kydex sheath. We'll take a look at that in detail later on in the review. Let's bring the knife back out here. Baz on Blades, tell me what that damn knife is made out of. That's all I care about. Well, for your blade steel, you're looking at Sandvix 14C28N. I think we are pretty familiar with this steel. It is considered one of the more premium steels within that budget realm and it is your sort of your best alternative so far to d2 in that budget realm um sandvik designed this steel exclusively for cutlery it is a high carbon high chromium 
um, medium performing, well balanced stainless steel. Edge retention is decent. It sharpens fairly easy, uh, but it has decent wear resistant for a nice usable extended uh, edge um, use, you know, over time, over use. Um, it's fairly tough. You do not get a lot of chipping with 14C. I like that about this steel. Uh, corrosion resistant is very good on this steel. I think it is just overall, as far as the stainless steels available in that mid-range, the ones I sort of like to lump together is the improved 440C-ish type steels this is one of your best performers and i think it is a decent option at this price point so handle material wise you're in a burlap micarta you've got stainless small parts um it is a fixed blade knife there's not a lot of moving parts here it's not a folder there's not a lot to talk about as far as materials go so let's get into this knife and talk about oh guys come on now this is a beautiful beautiful design look at that blade um this handle design is extremely interesting to my eyes and it's comfortable in the hand let's take a look at that i have large size hands chubby medium length fingers and you can see this is what the puffer the ts265 looks like in my hands you've got plenty of handle length what did i say four and a quarter inches um or 11 centimeters you got plenty of handle length to support the blade length um in this design you know a three and a quarter inch blade length is not very big for a fixed blade at all. Uh, but it still needs to be balanced so this feels like a usable tool in the hand and not uh, some unbalanced toy. You do not want that feeling. This actually feels uh, very balanced, uh, very usable in the hand, very tool-like, which is what a knife is. It is a tool. So, Let's talk about fit and finish on this. Uh, this 14C28 in blade is exquisitely done in all ways. Tucson is very precise on their grinds. I have reviewed multiple products from them, folders and fixed blades, and every one, as far as the grinds, has been very precise, very crisply done, very symmetric, very even. Let's take a look at that plunge. Let's get on the back and you can see the plunge for that swedge on the spine of the blade. Everything is very evenly done. Let's look at the secondary bevel, your edge grind here. Very well done. Very well done. Uh, the show side of the blade has no markings on it at all. On the back, you will find the only markings. Uh, Majuan Mokhtar's um, marking. You've got two sun knives and then the uh, blade steel. And that's it. That's it. Nothing else to mar a very attractive stone wash finish with just the right amount of sheen on it. Uh, to where it doesn't look like a basic finish. It's sort of got a, uh, not dressy sort of look like a satin would, uh, but it does have some sheen to it that lends it sort of the, that um, higher class sort of look to it. And then the, uh, the profile of this blade is extremely interesting to me. Uh, a beautiful drop point with a high point. Uh, you've got this sharper, more narrow, closed-in radius for the belly. Um, this knife would be an insane slasher against any meat whether it be four-legged or two-legged. Uh, Fifteen thousandths behind the edge. Uh, yeah, that's pretty decent right there. But these grinds, that's a beautiful flat grind. Look at the way the reflections move across the grind. 
that will show you defects in the grind. Okay, it'll show you high spots, it'll show you low spots, it'll show you spots where the finish is not even, and you don't see anything anywhere, anywhere on that blade. Everything perfectly done. And let's talk about two very, very important standout features on this knife, and I want to stop right here. And I want to say, if there is anyone, I don't care how important you are, that works at Tucson Knives, I want to tell you right now, these two things are extremely important, and I am right now saying they're perfect on this knife, pretty much. The first thing is the sharpening choil. Look at the way that is done. That is absolutely perfect. All other knife manufacturers, knife designers, look at this right now. You're all doing it wrong. This is the way to do a sharpening choil. It is not a giant, huge choil that you can put every finger on your hand in. It is a sharpening choil, okay? It comes out past the plunge well into the flat of that grind. You have nothing but edge to sharpen there. You will not be getting into that plunge with that sharpening choil unless you just suck it sharpening and then okay you just suck it sharpening there's no getting past that but that is so well done absolutely perfect if i was going to copy a sharpening choil anywhere off of any knife it would be this my my applause slow clap for two sun knives on that and the second thing on this knife a lot of knives get one thing really good this one gets so many things really good but let's talk about this jimping i have been doing this knife thing since 1978 I got my first knife at eight years old for Christmas in 1978, I believe. In 1979, I got my second knife for Boy Scouts. I've been doing this knife thing in life for decades. I have handled thousands and thousands and thousands of knives. I don't just like knives. I, I, you know, my life revolves around knives here at Baz on Blades. I'm telling you, of all the knives I've ever handled in my life, none, no matter who made it or what price point, had better jimping than this. This jimping is, it's like Jesus ground this jimping and was showing us, this is how you do it, okay? Don't commit adultery and grind your jimping like this. That's what Jesus is telling us right here. I, I'm not going to ignore Jesus. This jimping is awesome. Oh, my goodness, guys. Come on. This is so good. It is so good. I'm going to press my finger into it. We'll get some flesh down in that jimp, and then I'll let you guys see what it looks like. Okay, look at how much flesh gets down in that jimping. It is cut so well. All the ratios between the trough depth and width, the shape of the cut, the way the top of the trough is finished out, uh, the way the flats are done, even the way they've done this chamfer around the perimeter of the handle and carried it up into the jimp, and even that uh, pay or plays a part in how good this jimping is. Um, if there are any jimping snobs out there, you need to get this knife. 
you need to get this knife. Not only is that jimping cut perfectly for real use, it is placed perfectly. Look at how far forward it is from the handle area where my forwardmost finger is. I'm not compressed on some jimping way back in here, artificially compressing my thumb down. And I'm not reaching way out here for some jimping. When I grab this knife, that is where my thumb falls, right on that patch of jimping that is perfectly cut, apparently, by Jesus. I'm telling you right now, that is such good jimping. Um, kudos to Tucson, to Majuan Mokhtar. If you had anything to do with that jimping on your design, then keep that shit up. Tucson, use this jimping on every one of your fixed blades going forward, period. You never have to change that. That is perfection in jimping. So, fit and finish on the handle. Uh, it's Tucson, guys. Come on. These guys are like computer precise on everything. Uh, you can see that it is a boxed sort of overlay, meaning the handle is shrunk in, revealing the edge uh, of the perimeter of the handle. It is very even all the way around. Both sides, very even, guys. Uh, the styling of the handle is executed well as far as the machining goes. Um, they are uniform from side to side. Um, this micarta, it does have sort of a, you know, a hard surface feel to it, meaning uh, you've got a lot of epoxy on the surface and not so much of the fiber feel. Um, that is just, a, you know, my card is different, guys. I, I don't make my card, and I don't know any knife reviewer that does make my card. Uh, it's just different feeling. If you want to give it a little bit of a softer surface feel, pull the scales off, um, tape them down to a board, hit them with some sandpaper just to scuff the surface. I will probably do that with these. Um, I will hit them with, say, some 400, just scuff them at 400, and then I'll come back with some 600 and smooth that down for a satin finish. And that will expose a lot of the fibers in that micarta and give it a little more of a, a soft surface feeling. Uh, but as far as fit and finish on it, it's fantastic. You can see uh, chamfered around the lanyard hole here. Um, I, it, it just feels really good in hand. At 400 and, what I say, 475 thousandths thickness on the handle, uh, that's, that's, you know, getting up there close to that, you know, that perfect half inch thickness that everybody li likes to use sort of as a standard. Um, the screws are completely recessed, so you don't have any feel of the screws there. That lanyard hole is plenty big enough uh, to leave the core in on your 550 cord. Um, yeah, it's just fit and finish wise. There's, there's nothing. There is nothing uh, from a manufacturing standpoint that could have been done any better on this knife as far as fit and finish. And remember, Baz on Blades has over three decades of manufacturing experience. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about every process that this knife has gone through and I do not see anything that I would change as far as the manufacturing process and its final results as far as fit and finish quality. Absolutely perfect on this knife as it typically is on Tucson products. Yes, they are Chinese made, but damn, they do a good job. I mean, really, this is the equal of any nationality of manufacturing that there is. Um, it is just a fabulously well-made knife. This uh, Majuan Mokhtar uh, design is both appealing to the eye and to the hand. It just falls right into the hand. Um, it's enough handle width in the right places. 
along with the you know the handle thickness the radius of the scales they're not just flat slab scales they are radius um, all of those things combine to give it a tool feeling in the hand this knife does not even though it's very compact it does not in any way feel like a neck knife uh, i can't stand neck knives I, I don't even think i uh, well i've got some crkt minimalist but I, don't, I wouldn't use them as a neck knife i don't like wearing knives around my neck but this is just it's sort of a I'm sort of stumbling over my words here. I'm I'm talking about an area of fixed blade that I think is a little underserved by manufacturers. Uh, this three and a quarter inch with a nice heavy blade stock and a wide profile with a nice hand feeling um, handle on it. This is sort of a size that gets missed by a lot of manufacturers and uh, it is the basically a fixed blade the same size as a full-sized folder let's see what i've got out here i've got let's see i've got the um, the rock thor 7 out here waiting on review let's line these up look at that now, I've got these lined up at the forward edge of the handle. If we line them up at cutting edge, let's see what we've got here. All right. I am seeing about a quarter of an inch difference there. So you're right at the sort of full size folder type of size. Uh, that's right at that sort of paramilitary 2-esque EDC, sort of the medium-large EDC size that is a very popular segment within our community. Um, it's lightweight, too. It's lightweight, but it still feels substantial. It's got good balance to it. Uh, I can move the blade well on any axis. Um, I have a good idea where the tip is. I have a good idea where the cutting edge is in hand. Um, you've got as far as ergonomics and utilitarian use. Let's take a look at the blade. You've got a nice long primary cutting section here that's, that's pretty flat. And that gives you plenty enough room. And with this handle design, you're very close to the cutting edge. Uh, so even in a forward grip, I feel like I've got a lot of control at this end of the cutting edge. You want to choke up on it and get it in a pinch grip. You can get well out over this flat section of the blade and use it in a very controlled and detailed cutting way. Uh, you've got a very, very aggressive belly here. Whether you wanted to use this knife for field dressing or for martial use, if you wanted to carry this as sort of a hideout blade, uh, this knife in the hands of an experienced knifer would be devastating for the blade length. This knife would open up wound channels in muscle, skin, fat. Uh, it would open up wound channels that would be devastating because of this super aggressive, tight, belly there. Uh, you also get a very good tip. Now the tip is high. It's high up in relation to the center line of the knife. Uh, so it's a very slight drop. It's just you've got so much working area beneath the tip. The tips up here you've got so much working area beneath that tip. It's, you know what, this knife, I've cut some cardboard with it, I've cut some rope with it, I've cut some envelopes open with it. I haven't done any wood prep or anything like that, um, but this probably wouldn't be my go-to for that. Although as a, you know, a, as a camp uh, personal knife, companion knife, uh, this would be very nice 
uh, affixed to the strap of your pack or anything like that. And while we're talking about that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at that sheath. And it's got one shortcoming we'll talk about, and that's going to be the clip. Uh, the clip is very well done. It is very well shaped, uh, but it's kydex, and it's flimsy, guys. If you had this on your belt, and you were moving around, and something caught this knife, and you were moving, it would bend this clip all the way out, probably crack it here at the bend, and you would lose this knife. It would not take too many pounds of pressure to do that. So I suggest upgrading the clip. Now, as far as the sheath itself, fantastic design. It is a fold over taco type of build. It is compact. You could remove maybe a 16th of an inch off of this edge here, um, you know, outside of the uh, eyelets here. But a sixteenth of an inch is not going to do jack shit for uh, compactness or weight, so it's a waste of time. Um, the retention is good. Okay, that is not anything there. That's a piece of jewelry I have on that's rattling. There's absolutely... Guys, I'm shaking the shit out of that. There is no excess play in that at all. You can see it's a very well molded, very detailed molding, actually. Um, it's, you know what? I think this sheet, the sheet itself, is better done than on the TS-309, another Majuan, uh Moktar uh, design, but the clip point... I think this sheath is a little better done than that other sheath. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty good. It's got a little area here for a push off for your thumb. Get it right out of there. Uh, say you got that on your belt, you push off with your thumb. You're gonna roll right up to where that jumping is as your grip moves forward. Um, I, yeah, I think it's pretty well done. Uh, it really wants a tech lock. It wants a dot the loop sort of loop on it, snap loop, or it wants um, I, this knife being compact. I mean, your overall length is seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Would carry very well in a scout position if you like that horizontal carry. Um, I would probably, it does not have a secondary retention. So I would not carry this upside down on my pack strap or a vest. Uh, but any other type of carry, I think, would be very... Um, I don't think you'd have to worry about losing the knife. The retention is really good on this sheet. You just got to sort of... Uh, you know, that clip's not the best, guys. Even though for what it is, it's really well done. I mean, look at how straight and precise that is, where they've basically molded that clip out of hot kydex yeah pretty well done pretty well done for the ts265 a majuan moktar uh design made by tucson knives the puffer and you know what that sort of fits it guys but that blade profile the blade grinds Absolutely perfection in a sharpening choil, perfection in jimping, um, comfortable handle, decent materials for $53.99. I mean, damn, I'd be willing to pay at least $54 for this knife any day of the week. So there you go, guys. I am wholly endorsing another Knife from Tucson Knives, another design from Majwan Mokhtar. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I doubt that I am because I'm such an idiot. Uh, but no offense intended. I love your design language, brother. Love it. So, another great one from Tucson. I am going to recommend it. As always, I thank you very much for taking the time to watch another one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.